Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiast. Right off the bat on the old show today, Volkswagen back in the news again, because remember that $10.2 billion fine from the U.S. government has now been ballooned up to $15 billion, including a couple of fines that are going to go to some other factions inside of the U.S. government as well. The, also, the compensation funds for those diesel scandal owners, that has ballooned up too, from $7,000 U.S. dollars down to $10,000 U.S. dollars. And if you want that money, you do have to go to your Volkswagen dealership and get the vehicle fixed to the new regs. So if you don't want that, you better get buddy-buddy with a diesel mechanic near you. Also, the European Union wants in on the action. The EU wants not only the compensation package for the owners inside of the European Union, but also wants some of that fine money as well. So this is just the start of a very expensive year of 2016 for Volkswagen AG. Now, they do have a vehicle that's hopefully going to help with that situation. Underneath the Volkswagen umbrella, the brand new Porsche Panamera took the wraps off over the past couple of days. New Panamera is the highest, the high-end saloon car. Tons of cool tech inside, including a brand new 12-inch touchscreen. In fact, over 12-inch touchscreen is going to be inside of this machine. Lots of infotainment stuff. It's a pretty cool piece of kit, but let's co focus on the old hard parts, if you will. Now, the Panamera S comes with a 2.9-liter twin-turbocharged V6 making 440 brake horsepower and 405 pounds-feet of torque. You can also get, and this is only in certain sections of the market, certain markets will get this brand new 4-liter turbocharged diesel V8 that makes 422 brake horsepower and 627 pounds-feet of torque. Now, you can jump up to the Panamera Turbo. I know it doesn't make much sense. They all have turbos. But the new Panamera Turbo comes with a new 4-liter twin-turbocharged V8, making 550 brake horsepower and 567 pounds-feet of torque. Obviously, there's a Panamera S, a Panamera 4S, a Panamera Turbo, and a Panamera Turbo 4, which means that all these vehicles come in all-wheel drive. Now, if each one of these machines will be shifted through a brand new PDK 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. And these vehicles will have a starting price of just under $100,000. And balloons all the way up to just under $150,000 will be available in Porsche dealerships in November of 2016. And a fun little side story. This thing has already lapped the Norschleife Loop Nürburgring circuit in 7 minutes 38 seconds. 18 seconds quicker than the old Panamera and become the quickest large sedan around the old Nürburgring circuit officially. So, I had a boy for the folks over at Porsche. Next up on the list, well, Ford GT hasn't even reached dealer showrooms and we've already got a special edition model coming to you soon. This is the brand new 2017 Ford GT 66 Heritage Edition. Obviously harking back to that 1966 1, 2, 3 finish at the 24 Hours of Le Mans. Especially this may have been ramped up a little quicker now that they won the 2016 24 Hours of Le Mans. They're celebrating big with this brand new machine. Now the vehicle comes in just two colors, matte black and gloss black. With the white stripes, the two logos hearkening back to that 1966 winning machine. Now the vehicle has yet to receive pricing or availability. I'm assuming it's going to be pretty expensive and very rare. We'll keep you in tune if we hear any more. And not only 50 years of Ford at Le Mans, there's 50 years period for the Chevrolet Camaro. Yes, just a couple of days have gone past since its 50th birthday. Now, General Motors is celebrating big with tons of Camaro-themed events, including one at the Woodward Dream Cruise. There's going to be a Camaros and Coffee situation. Tons of cool stuff. You can check out General Motors for a lot more of that information. But we're going to focus on this, the 50th anniversary Camaro itself. It comes in this color and this color only, the orange accents. Not to mention it's got orange accents on the old brake calipers. 50th anniversary logos throughout the exterior and the interior. Now, the 
base vehicle is still just the Camaro SS, but that's still something coming with that 6.1 liter normally aspirated V8 making 415 brake horsepower and 415 pounds V to torque. That is either shifted through a 6-speed manual transmission or the brand new 8-speed automatic. Pricing and availability have yet to be announced on that, but with the Woodward Dream Cruise only a handful of weeks away, I'm sure we're going to hear some information about that very soon. Next up on the list, yes, more Top Gear terribleness has been coming out over the past several days. And it's got me thinking whether some of this stuff may or may not be true. A couple of episodes ago, we talked about the fact that they were, or I shouldn't say fact, but the fiction of possibility of pulling Bass Chris Evans a little bit of from the in-studio segments of the program and pushing forward Rory Reed. Well, we're five episodes in and we've yet to see this situation, so this next story could possibly be taken with a grain of salt and involves these guys being quite angry at each other. Obviously, not the Stig. Well, the Stig's always pissed at somebody, but it's Matt LeBlanc and Chris Evans. There's been a lot of rumors that Chris Evans is very difficult to work with, very demanding. He's also been in situations where apparently, or allegedly, he's been very jealous of some of his other cohorts who have been getting rave reviews online and elsewhere, and he's really been kicked in the teeth over these past several weeks. I have to say I'm a pretty big Chris Evans fan. He's a huge car guy, and I think he's done pretty good inside of the franchise, but whether he gets a second shot at this franchise remains to be seen because the latest story involves Matt LeBlanc. Matt LeBlanc apparently has been given a second go-round for a second season in the Top Gear franchise, but he allegedly has made an ultimatum that if he comes back, he wants Chris Evans out and canned from the program altogether. Again, we'll have to wait and see on this particular situation, and I'm going to have a brand new uh, reboot. I'm going to talk about the whole reboot of this brand new show coming up just in a handful of days after the last episode of this show, and I'll give you some inside thoughts of what this fat guy actually thinks about that program and what it needs to do moving forward. Sticking with the Top Gear franchise... Some sad news came out. In fact, uh, just a handful of days ago, I was trolling the old Facebook machine when Rutledge Wood, one of the presenters on the U.S. version of Top Gear on the History Channel, him including Adam Ferrara and Tanner Faust, Mr. Wood actually announced that that was last night's episode, the night before the taping of this program, was the last ever episode of the History Channel's version of Top Gear. But he did hold out hope that they may find a new home. And the BBC still owns this program. And I'm certain that they're shopping it around. So hopefully we'll get to see this after 72 episodes and over six years, six seasons of, of shows. It's a shame to see this thing go because it's a fantastic program. Would love to see this thing find a new home. Hopefully not on one of those sports channels. Those be coming from Fox, NBC, and CBS because... Then it may get buried with not a solid time slot. It may be very tough to find unless you have a DVR, and I'm way too poor to have a DVR. Sticking with the Top Gear thing, or at least a little nostalgia Top Gear thing. Remember those old guys that had Top Gear? Yes, they've got a brand new logo. The Grand Tour has a brand new logo. And also some brand new stuff. The day of the taping of this program, and it's up on the Facebook page as we speak. Yes, Jeremy Clarkson and Richard Hammond have gone on Facebook Live to announce that July 16th of 2016 will be the first ever taping of the new program happening in Johannesburg, South Africa. Tickets are available. There's only 250 slots for people that can fit inside of what they're calling a tent for the filming of this new program. Cannot wait. Haven't heard yet of just when exactly a release date, but when we hear... We'll let you know. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiast. Don't forget to like us over on the Facebook page. Links down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time. Get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.